In 2015, former national goalkeeper Donovan Ricketts called a time on his playing career. But it didn't take him long to decide his next destination after playing. So as a player, I only concentrated on playing. Uh, didn't know what you wanted to do when you retired. So I didn't do anything like thinking about my future after the game. So 2015, retired, then sat and said, no what? Uh, Paul Campbell, goalkeeper coach at the national team, made a connection in Atlanta with Emory University. So yeah, so that's my first stop after playing in 2016 as a goalie coach at Emory University. At Emory, I was strictly a goalkeeping coach, but the coach leaned on me for everything, like on the field, defensive and both offensive. So my knowledge, I saw that my knowledge was vast, huge, a lot of knowledge for the game. So I said, I should get myself certified. So 2016, end of 2016, I did the signing up for the B course, the USSF B license. So yeah, so beginning of January 2017, I went to do my license to be certified as a coach. In 2017, I got a job with the Roughnecks, Tulsa Roughnecks in the USL. That's the second tier in America. So I got a job with the Roughnecks as a goalie coach again, but I had already enrolled for the license. So yeah, I got permission to leave, to do the license, to come back and do my duties as the goalie, goalkeeper coach. The coach got fired, assistant got fired, a new coach came in, Mike Ensign, in, at the end of the 2018 season, he came in. So he brought in his own coach. Uh, so the coach was rather experienced, so I was relegated again to just being the goalie coach. But at the end of the season, assistant left, and he called me up and he said, you have a vast experience and you have certification. How about being my assistant coach? So in 2019, got promoted to being an assistant coach and also the goalie coach. There's so much more to learn in this game. So much more to learn about my role, so much more to learn about how to prepare everybody. So maybe the more experience I get, then you'll see me doing a little bit more, but I'm still at the stage where I'm learning. Sometimes the best learning is on the job or, yeah, but I am, I have the luxury right now to learn behind the scenes because I'm an assistant. The makeup of the team is different in terms of culture, nationality, and personality. So as a coach, you have to get people who are motivated, who wants to succeed. And once you get people that are motivated and wants to succeed and buy into what you want them to do on the football field, everything will gel in. But once you get people that want to pull in different directions, that's a problem. So the makeup of the team is much more nowadays than just raw talent that you see. I go back in January for preseason still as the assistant coach at Tulsa Roughnecks. So looking forward to another season, learning more, because the transition is different. I like As a player, you were, I was in charge of me, just me. When I prepared, I just prepared for myself. I didn't worry about center backs, anybody I prepared for myself. So now as a coach, now you are in charge of, I would say almost, all the places that I've been in terms like Jamaica is more like a semi-professional. The only time we experience a level of professionalism is when we go in the national setup. So club-wise, it's not, it's not comparable because we have players that go to work, leave work to come back to play football in the evenings. When the environments that I've been in, this is your job. So we wake up to go play or to go practice. So 
and they take care of most of the things for you meal supplements and all that so in terms of that i think being abroad is vastly superior to what we do here in jamaica but how do clubs in jamaica move above the level that they currently operate sometimes some things is just above your peer grade <laughs> This is one of the things that says I moved my peer grade. But I think we need more structure in terms of getting kids involved from early and uh, keeping them interested in the support. Because you notice, you see the turnout we get for high school games, a Cornwall College game, as opposed to an MBU game. So there's a fall off right there. and. I think we lose a lot of the, ki the youths after the school to make the transition to the highest level, which is the Premier League in Jamaica. So I don't know how we'll get that catch net to keep everybody involved, but definitely that's where the problem comes in. We have a grassroots program. That means we have kids playing from a young age. Now we need people with the knowledge to pass to the kids because at this age the mind is ripe to teach them the proper technique of the game and how you want them to play. So at this age I think the next thing comes in now after we look for you because the natural transition after playing is given back in terms of the knowledge you have in the sport. First you, the, you go, you learn a little bit more because it, it has changed. So every day things change so we learn a little bit more. And then we come, we try to help in every little way and we work our way up to every facet. If today I come in and I work with goalies, but I'm still trying to learn how the back four function, the midfield function, until we are in charge of back four midfield and ultimately the entire team. So if I have to encourage you to come, the love for the sport is not there. And once you have that love, the career for knowledge and learning comes naturally. He says it's harder to work with today's players than those who came before he played. So I'd say the players that played before me, they were hardcore. Didn't require much more than a ball. Give them a ball, give them a feel, and it's done. Now, we've progressed past that where players now, they complain about the grass, complain about the bed, complain about every little small detail. So now, the modern player, you have to work harder to keep the modern player happy. So right now, small is the most minute detail matters to the modern player. So the coach knows what affects his team from performing. So he tries to get them everything to make them comfortable to perform. And as things changed with the modern players, so it did with the modern game. Modern game, there's no room for a luxury player anymore unless you're Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo. So the luxury players are being, becoming extinct. So now coaches, they play both sides of the game. And attack, yes, play your beautiful football. Be yourself, be, express yourself. We lose the ball, good on transition defense. Right now it's easy, you know, Jurgen Klopp is the kind of football that he plays like. Everybody going. You might give that leeway to walk a little bit more because it gets your goals every time, but complete team of everybody attacking, everybody defending. Nutrition is key to any athlete, but Ricketts says the local player cannot afford to feed himself properly. I'm going to work. If it's a bun and cheese, I need to kill the hunger pain. I'm going to get a bun and cheese. And the salary that I get, a bun and cheese salary, as opposed to somebody else that goes to practice, there's breakfast. After, breakfast. after practice, there's lunch. So two different mindset, two different preparation. And track and field, in my estimation, in my mind, is more of an individual sport. And in terms of where track and field is right now, I think it's ahead of, locally ahead of soccer, football Jamaica, in Jamaica. So, in order for the athlete to be maximum performance, he needs to fuel the body right. Football, players can hide because it's 11 people on the field. 
So everybody share the workload differently and you can't get away with certain things as I'm supposed to check and feel it. It can't hide. It's you. <laughs> so, and the same thing, I don't think the money-wise we can fuel the body properly as a football man in Jamaica. It's hard. Very. My salary has to cover for everything. Mommy, daddy, brother, sister, virgin. So it's difficult and you, you want to get to the top level.